Big thanks and a big hello to you joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners, proudly brought to you by One Equine. And we're looking forward to another great program this Saturday night at Albion Park. You can tell the Constellations Carnival is fast approaching. Week by week, more stars are stepping out. The brightest star in the universe is back at the races this Saturday night. We're talking about Leap to Fame. He goes around in race number seven. But the support card is equally impressive. The track record holder, Black Sedans, he's second up following his thumping victory first up last week. The best mare in the state, Uptown Beach Girl. She's back in action going around in the opening race. And there's several other races that we can look forward to. That, that's all in front of us this Saturday night. I'm about to speak with Chloe Butler and Matt Nielsen. Both have good books of drives coming up this weekend. Chloe Butler joins us to go through her book of drives on Saturday night. Chloe, appreciate the time. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, this first race, this is a great way to start the program. Loaded with depth here and you're driving an in-form mare, drawn the ace. That's Jendon Strike. How do you rate her chances? Yeah, I actually think she's a big chance on Saturday night, especially drawn one. Couldn't have been happy with her last week. Um, she went huge. Yeah, so you've been with her now her last two starts. You scored with her two starts ago, beat up on her own sex, but did it really well. What did you make last week off that awkward draw? Uh, look, we were really, really happy with her run. It was huge. Um, she did a lot of work early, and, yeah, we couldn't have been happy. Okay, so... Is it as simple as it looks on paper? Uptown Beach Girl, many think she's the best mare in Queensland. She's fresh up, she's drawn gate three. Is she likely to push to the front and you're in the trail? Is that a likely scenario? I'd like that. I'd like that. That's how I'd like it to pan out. Um, yeah, she doesn't, she's not blessed with Gatesby, but she can do that little bit to hold her own and hopefully Uptown Beach Girl will be the first one there. Okay, this race is going to generate good pressure. There's a, a number of horses that will want to get forward pretty quickly. So if you're in behind them, just tucked away with a, a solid tempo, that's going to be a, a, a real plus. Yeah, definitely, especially the way she's racing at the moment. She's absolutely flying. No issue with getting, getting up the sprint lane? No, I don't think so. She seems fine. She steers really good, so I think that should be fine. Okay, excellent chance there. Jendon Strike, race one, number one. Let's go across to race four. What did you make of Comanche Warrior last week? Look, we were really happy. He's not a death seat horse. Um, he sat parked a few starts before that, and he didn't show anything either. So I think he's more of a front runner or a sit sprinter, but last week nothing wanted to come around and give us cover, so we had no luck last week. Okay, is there a chance that you might be able to get the lead here on Saturday night? I was hoping so, but I'm not also 100% confident. Um, I'd sort of just have to weigh it up and see how it all pans out. Okay, if you did find the front here and Storm Tide's on your back, would he be able to hold off Storm Tide late along the inside? I think so, if he gets it nice and cheap out in front. He's absolutely flying at the moment, so I think, yeah, if he found the front, he'd be very hard to beat. Okay, what are the odds of drawing three two weeks in a row? Yeah, I know, very unlucky, the poor bugger. He just <laughs> needs a draw. Well, hopefully this might be his race on Saturday night. He looks a good chance. Race five for the Mares, bling the luck. Uh, she was very impressive winning at Recliffe. Pass two at Albion Park. Um, you know, not as good as the winning form at Recliffe, but how did you grade her last week? Uh, it was probably a personal best, to be honest. Cat King Cole's a really good horse, and it's won a few feature races. Um, she's not up to that sort of those sort of horses but um, hopefully one day she can sneak through and win a quali and she can go somewhere else. <laughs> so this is easier then it, with no Cat King Cole this should be a little easier? Yeah I think so she's not blessed with a draw a back row draw to be tucked away would have been a bit nicer but yeah hopefully we can get a bit of luck and go from there. Righto race number seven danger zone second up how excited were you guys last week after that performance fresh? Yeah very he had no luck at all go his way and couldn't have been happier with his run. Um, the way he hit the line was massive. So, yeah, we were really happy. Has anyone chased any sectionals? What sort of time do you think he would have run for his last half? Very quick. <laughs> <laughs> we were flying down the outside. I know it might not have looked like it, but he definitely was. Did he feel quick, though? Yeah, definitely. He felt really good and strong. Was that the perfect start point for this campaign for Danger Zone? Yeah, definitely. We didn't overdo it too much and, you know, we were really happy with his run. OK. Now, this is going to be a challenge on Saturday night. Uh, he's second up. He's going to strip fitter. But you've got to run into Leap to Fame. That, that's a tall order, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. But I know it's a really good horse. Um, I don't think... I think it will be the winner in the race, but as long as we run a good race again, we'll be happy. OK, as long as he's building towards those carnival features, that's all you want? Yeah, definitely. All right. Your final drive on Saturday night, you know this mare, Will, Red Tricks. You're perfect on her, one for one? 
Yeah, got a good record. <laughs> can you maintain that perfect record on Saturday night? I hope so. Hopefully she can slide to the top again and she'll take some beating after last week's run. What did you make of last week? Was there any sort of concerns seeing how she got a little fierce mid-stages there last week? Not really. She's one of those mares that sort of likes to roll along a bit, so I'll try and keep her as happy as I can and let her do her own thing out in front. And hopefully she comes back to me and we can get an easy quarter and let her run home. Having that experience, that previous experience with Red Tricks, that, that's going to be really beneficial this weekend, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's nice to know her and, yeah, different draw to last time, but hopefully we can still get the job done. All right. And just on that time that you drove it, you were perfect. You got on like a house on fire, didn't you? Yeah, she was really good when I drove her. Shane I said she could get a bit keen, but she was better than I thought she would have been. But, um, yeah, hopefully she's good again this week. Well, she's in super form, there's no doubt about it, and she's a, a very good chance of making it four straight there on the weekend. Out of all of your drives, which one are you most looking forward to? I think I'm going to have to say Red Tricks just from the draw, and I think she could lead up that race and hopefully run along nice and get the job done. Awesome. Race 10, number four, Red Tricks. Chloe, as always, really appreciate the time, and we'll see you trackside. Thanks, Chris. The inform Matty Nielsen joins us to go through his drives on Saturday night, and he's with us now. Matty, appreciate the time. Uh, thanks, Chris. No worries at all. We start with race three, Uncle Chan. He's a recent addition to the stables of Donnie and Maureen Smith. Have you been a little disappointed with the effort so far? Uh, his first start, I got an easy lead and in a strong race, but he was a little bit, yeah, he didn't finish it off at all. But he, um, his last Saturday night, I thought he raced much better. Got, went through the line and that, but it did have a soft run throughout. But he, uh, yeah, at least he went to the line. He went a little bit better for last Saturday night, I thought. Okay. He is known for his gate speed. Is there any chance that he could could get to the peg line here? Yeah, there's a little bit of pace around him, but um, he's got summer speed. I'll go through it with Donnie. It's a fairly strong race. I mean, um, yeah, it was a lot, a lot of a buyer in there, and yeah, it's a pretty strong race for him, but. Uh, yeah, we'll just have to talk to him and see, work out what we do. But he's got options. Yeah. OK. Ideal scenario, lead out, then hand over to a horse like my Alderman Byron. There's probably several that are thinking that, but would that be the uh, the, the most ideal situation? Oh, if, that's, if that happened to work out, that would be that would be good. But, um, yeah, obviously there's those other, other people inside you who have different, different ideas about that as well. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, we'll see how we go there with Uncle Chan. What about in race four? This guy's he's going super, Lock and Var Jag. He's bursting to win another race. Yeah, no, all, all his runs have been good in Queensland. He's um, yeah, raced well from the front and raced well from the back and uh, looks a suitable race for him Saturday night. He gets his, gets his chance to sort of work forward and, yeah, and just... Um, See how he goes from there. Yeah. Okay. I was going to ask about the draw. Is it a little sticky, given that you've got pace to your inside? Storm Tide, Comanche Warrior, both can get out pretty quick, and you're on their outside. So potentially a little sticky, or do you think you'll uh, end up outside them? Yeah, a little a little bit, but from there, well, it, it's sort of went back from five last week and, and ended up getting a fairly good spot, fall back on the fence and ran into some money. But, uh, yeah, I see he's got a... Sort of probably work, try and try and work forward and just see where he ends up from there. I don't, going back in this sort of race, I don't think you'll. Uh, yeah, I don't think it'll work out for him. So he's just got to try and try and do it himself this week. All right. In your opinion, what's his best racing pattern? Is he a, is he a leader? Is he a come from behind type? How do you think he goes best? Yeah, well, he's he, he, when he led the one time he led here, and he, um, I thought it was a terrific effort. You know, and he. Sort of st really strong run race over the 2100, and he he was going going to win till 100 out, and he just had enough then. But he uh yeah, he runs in Melbourne. I watched a few of them, and he was pretty sharp when he was in front. But um yeah, no, he's I think he race from either way. It doesn't really worry him. Yeah. All right. Well, he's a good chance, no question about that. Lock and Var Jag. I think this is a good chance as well. Race five, number 10, always be me. You know this mare really well, trained by Mark Ducks. Look, she's drawn the outside of the second row, but she looks one of the class performers of this field. Yeah, it's the right sort of race for her. She's just come back from a break. She had the one run back, and, she, and then she was scratched yeah, a couple of weeks ago. But, um, yeah, I'm, sure, but I'm sure, yeah, if, if she gets a... She'll be running on late, and... Um, 
yeah, she'll be in the top half of the field for sure. Mm. That first up seven probably doesn't read all that good on paper, but it was a really good but, run and the sectionals backed it up. Yeah, the fractions were good and she sort of, she felt very new, like she needed it, but uh, yeah, the sectionals were still good throughout the race, yeah. Okay, main dangers here, are we looking at our modern mini, Ail Sun, Magical Maya? Yeah, there's the horses there. Hopefully you should be able to follow Magical Maya late into the race. But yeah, but the other ones will be up the top that are, uh, yeah, it's just, if she just gets a bit of genuine pace, which will suit her, but yeah, I'm sure she's, she's good enough to do it if she, if she's, if she uh, gets a bit of luck. Yeah. All right, race seven again for Mark Darks. This is a good drive, unfortunately, just a, a really super strong race. You've got to contend with Leap to Fame and Co., but Argyle's going really well. So, you know, like many here, you're probably chasing minor end of the prize money, but uh, he can certainly run top four. Yeah, he raced, I drove him two ago, he raced well, and yeah, like didn't have a lot of luck, and then he raced again well again last start, but yeah, obviously, with the, the three, four-year-olds there, they're um, fairly better than the rest, better than your normal MO, <laughs> and um, he's, uh, yeah, but he'll, uh, yeah, he'll show you a run on, but he, he won't be far away from winning a race in the next few weeks, obviously it's a bit hard this week, but he uh, he won't be far away in the next few weeks. All right, your final drive on Saturday night in the mayor's race. It's all about Alice. She's going well. Is it just the draw that you know could prove to be the uh, the stumbling block here? Oh, uh, yeah, the draw doesn't help her at all. She sort of, and she she needs a genuine run. She needs them to get home slow for her to run on. She sort of doesn't show a lot of dash. She sort of probably got to go back and go to the pegs. Finds it hard if they come wide and unless they're getting home real slow. But, yeah, it's, yeah she's probably got it ahead of over there, but she's, uh, um, yeah, she's going well. But, yeah, she just, she's just going to need a real fast run race to bring her into it. In time, do you think she'll win one of these mayor's qualies? Oh, she might be running out of time. She's had a few <laughs> goes, but, uh, yeah, oh, she's, she's definitely good enough. It's just where the ratings, how yeah, they're always done on the ratings. She's higher than generally, so she never... She's never going to draw good to be able to do that unless she gets right back. But yeah, I don't know if she'll wait that long with her, but she's, no, she'll keep trying for a few more weeks and then, yeah, see what happens. Okay. Out of your drives on Saturday night, which one are you most looking forward to? Oh, uh, Lock and Vard Jag. I think he's, yeah, he's raced well enough to, um, to uh, put his foot, um, best again I mean he'll uh, he won't win the top three for sure excellent race four number four Matty as always really appreciate the time we'll see you trackside yeah no worries Chris tough a big thanks as per normal to both Chloe and Matt giving up their time ahead of their drives on Saturday night we wish them the very best of luck if you fancy a flutter on the weekend, I think you've got to be patient. The best bet, late in the program. Race 10, number two, Yarraman Bella. We know this mare. She was up here last year for the carnival. This mare went around in the Group 1 Golden Girl. She's clearly the class runner of the field. She comes up with a good draw, joins the stables of Shane Graham. Kelly Dawson takes the drive. I think it all points to a victory, and I'm sure connections are eyeing off the Group 1 Golden Girl again. So if they're keen to secure a start, I think a forward showing is expected. Race 10, number two, Yarraman Bella. That's the best bet on the card this Saturday night. We've got a big program, 11 races in total, and we start just after 5 o'clock. 5.04, that's it for another edition of Weekend Winners. We'll see you trackside this Saturday night.